for your service. Thanks. Have a good day to you. Good, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to 
2022 Memorial Day ceremony here at Veterans Park. My name is John Heinrich, and I'm the commander of the Mimesburg American Legion Post 165. We have gathered here today to honor all of the brave men and women who have offered their service to our country. Many people offer their service as volunteers, police and firefighters, Military members offer a unique gift of service. When you enter the military, you enter a special covenant with the American people. You are asked to raise your right hand and swear to defend the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. This means offering your life if called upon to defend this country. In return, the American people are expected to honor and remember the sacrifices of all the people who have given us our freedom. Memorial Day is the official time to do this. That is why we are here today. I would now like to call upon Chaplain Lysi for the invocation. Please remove your covers and in your own way join me in prayer. Our God, the supreme commander of us all, be with us as we come together here in Veterans Park. Bless our efforts as we take time to remember those who died and were a part of the United States Army, the United States Navy, the Coast Guard, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and the Space Force. Be with the family members the friends and the comrades who grieve this day because of the loss they feel as a result of a loved one who perished during wartime and never came home. Be with the family members and friends of veterans who fought their personal battle of old age and illness and then died after serving our country. Watch over this park Bless those who come here throughout the year to pause and to remember. Be near to each one this day. This is our prayer. As we all say together, amen. Thank you, Chaplain. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll please stand for the national anthem and our singer, from the Honor Guard, Alberta Duncan. Thank you, Alberta.
before we get too deep into the program, I'd like just to take a second at this time to recognize, and if you will please stand, all of the members of the Miamisburg Historical Society Committee. These members put in countless hours each year for the Veterans Historical Society. President of Miamisburg Historical Society, Ken Ballinger. Chairman Randy Staley. Tom Brooks. Jim Caldwell. Tom Pompas. Paul and then Zankowitz. Chaplain Don Lysi. Adjutant at Post 165, Mark Coven. Third District Adjutant, Peggy Gross. Past Post Commander of 165, Wayne Kern. Past Mayor, Dick Church. Parks and Recreational, Rachel Goforth. Councilman Ryan Coven. Assistant City Manager, Anthony Coventon. And our City Manager, Michelle Collins. Please give them a hearty round of applause. Thank you. I would now like to introduce our 2022 Memorial Parade Marshal, who is Paul Schultz, who has served the American Legion Post 165 for many years. He was inducted into the Army Air Corps on May 26, 1944, during World War II, right after high school. He went to Biloxi, Mississippi for basic training and was preparing to enter pilot training when the atomic bomb was dropped in August 1945. This immediately changed the need of pilots and he was sent to Illinois for cryptographic training and then sent to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base Air Service Command where he served under the base commander. He was also a musician in the 666 Air Corps Marching Band and Orchestra. Paul was discharged from the new United States Air Force in January 1947. We are proud to say Paul is one of the remaining World War II veterans belonging to the Mimesburg American Legion Post 165. Paul has three sons, one of which, the oldest, I believe, is here today. Steve is here, I hope. Please stand, Steve. Steve served in the Vietnam War. Dan, the middle son, served a total of 46 years in the United States Air Force and retired as a full colonel. Tony, the youngest, has had a successful career in the petroleum industry, including travels around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our Grand Marshal, Mr. Paul Schultz. It certainly is a pleasure, to, uh, a, a pleasure to be with you today. And I'm reminded of a small, so many memories. I was part of the great generation. My uh, paternal grandfather uh, came to the United States uh, at the uh, turn of the century and goes back to uh, uh, my uh, goes back to be a, a burgermeister in the East, what used to be called uh, East Germany, but it's uh, Prussia. Why I say that is because I think today that I'm very much reminded of the fragile, fragile democracy that we hold here. I think back to those that fought in the revolution in order to get our freedom and to hold on to it. Freedom doesn't come cheap. 
Freedom comes with a cost and a dedication. Our democracy, the democracy around the world, are in danger. The, the Roman Empire is the longest living democracy with the exception of the United States of America. And I just had a few minutes to say to you, I hope you, you will join me in prayer and pray for the peace and love that we so much have had in this country. And, and, and we need to measure up to that and reach out to our friends. Reach out to those who came, my grandfather who came through Ellis Island and was welcomed. Now we don't welcome people coming into the country. Things are changing, but we the people need to take control of our democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to now introduce a person who is proud to call Mimesburg her hometown. She is a 1984 Mimesburg High School graduate and attended Heidelberg College, Cape Cod Community College, Wright State University, and Honduras College. Her first profession has been as a real estate broker for 33 years. In 2016, she was elected to the City Council of Mimesburg. And then, in 2019, she ran unopposed for the high office of mayor. In January 2020, she was sworn in as the first female mayor of the city of Miamisburg. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the first female mayor of Miamisburg, Mrs. Michelle Collins. Wow, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I forgot I did all of those things. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, what a great day in Miamisburg for a parade and a ceremony. Before I start, I do want to recognize that we've got some hard working folks that work hard for you here in town. Our city council, I believe there are six of us here. Uh, Councilman Ryan Colvin, Councilman John Stolder is here, Councilman Tom Nicholas, Vice Mayor, Jeff Nestor is here. Councilwoman Sarah Thacker is here. And I did see our state representative, Tom Young. And earlier in the parade, I'm not sure if he's still here, but uh, County Treasurer John, Mc John McManus was here. So let's thank all of them for being here and for what they do. Appreciate that. I always have to um, recognize my mayor, Mayor Dick Church. And I'll take a few moments of your time to read a reading that is recommended by the American Legion National Headquarters. This is their 2022 reading. Their mission was noble. Evacuate desperate civilians yearning to escape a brutal regime. The 13 U.S. service members who died during a terrorist bombing in Afghanistan last August will not be the last American heroes to make to make such a sacrifice, but they represent the best of a generation. There was Navy, Navy Corpsman Max Savayek of Berlin Heights, Ohio. His high school football coach called him fearless. He was only 22. Army Staff Sergeant Ryan Noss of Corrington, Tennessee was a member of the 82nd Airborne. He was only 23. Marine Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover of Salt Lake City was serving his third tour in Afghanistan. He was 31. Marine Corps Sergeant Johanny Rosario Picardo of Lawrence, Massachusetts was a member of her brigade's female engagement team responsible for screening civilians while respecting cultural sensitivities. She was 25. Marine Corps Sergeant Nicole Gee of Sacramento, California, posted an Instagram photo of herself cradling an Afghan baby. 
She captioned the photo, I love my job. Just days before the attack, she was only 23. Marine Corporal Hunter Lopez of Indio, California, was the son of two Riverside Sheriff's Department officers. He was 22. USMC Corporal Humberto Sanchez of Logansport, Indiana, was on his homecoming court his senior year. He died at the age of 22. Lance Corporal Jared Schmidt of St. St. Charles, Missouri. He liked to play video games, his father lovingly said. He was only 20. Lance Corporal Dylan Marola of Cucamonga, California, had been in Afghanistan for no more than a week. He planned to attend college and study engineering. He was only 20. Lance Corporal Kahim Nahui of Noraco, California, served in his junior ROTC before joining the Marines. He was 20. Not only are these diverse men and women forever in our hearts, but for those who knew them, they are forever young. They come from every background, yet they share a common goal, to serve America and make life different for others. It was the same EOS that drove our Korean War veterans 70 years ago. George Andrew Davis, Jr., a World War II flying ace with the Army Air Forces before taking his remarkable skills to the newly created U.S. Air Force flying an F-86 Sabre. He downed 14 North Korean, Chinese, and Soviet aircraft. He led his last aerial patrol mission on February 10, 1952, near the Manchurian border. Major Davis spotted 12 enemy MiG-15 aircraft speeding towards friendly fighter bombers. He sped through the rear of the enemy formation and downed two enemy MiGs. Rather than invade the enemy, who by then was concentrating on his aircraft, he reduced his speed to engage a third, M, a third MiG-15. It was during this engagement that he sustained a direct hit and lost his life. Major Davis was 31. He was promoted after his death to Lieutenant Colonel and awarded the Medal of Honor. His citation states his abdominal fighting spirit, heroic aggressiveness, and superb courage in engaging the enemy against formidable odds exemplified valor at its highest. From the American Revolution to the global war on terrorism, more than one million American veterans have given their lives and made the supreme sacrifice. They died so that we could continue to cherish the things that we love, our God, our country, and our families. That is why we gather here today on Memorial Day to honor the memory of our fallen warriors who have given everything for this country. We are also reminded on this day that brave men and women who have always stepped forward to take the oath of allegiance as members of America's armed forces, willing to fight if necessary and die for the sake of freedom and reflecting on sacrifices of their comrades during World War I, the founders of the American Legion saw four common pillars as to why Americans so often answer the call of their nation, even to the point of sacrificing their own lives. They do it to provide a strong national defense, to keep America safe and secure against those enemies who would destroy our American way of life. They do it for their fellow comrades, for those fighting by their side against all odds, and for those who eventually separate from the military but proudly claim their status as veterans. They do it for American core values of God and country, family, patriotism, and our freedom to worship as we each please. They do it for their children, so they can grow up in America 
that's strong and free. It is through the last pillar, children, that we must continue to honor the spirits of these American heroes. We must, must share the legacy and tell the stories of those who are no longer here with us. Nearly 7,000 American men and women who died while fighting the glory on terrorism, many of them were parents. The loss felt by Gold Star families is forever remembered. There are many tangible things that we can do to honor the service of our fallen heroes. First and foremost, it is to take care of our loved ones. In some cases, this means providing financial assistance to help children obtain higher education. Across this great country, the American Legion is raising funds to ensure that college education will be a reality for these families. This is why the American Legion has established the American Legion Legacy Scholarship Fund. It is also why we wear the poppy, a symbol of hope that sprouted in a Belgian battlefield. Memorial Day is not about picnics and parades, though there's never anything wrong while, with enjoying and celebrating our American way of life. Memorial Day is about gratitude and remembrance. It is about honoring the men and women who made it possible for us to gather here today in peace. But the reason that is Memorial Day, the reason that we are gathered here today is to remember those who made our way of life possible. They are truly the guardians of our freedom. God bless you all for being here and God bless America. Mayor Collins, thank you so much. I'm gonna play the Army song. All right. Thank you. We will now have the roll call of those comrades who paid the supreme sacrifice. Our South Commander, Ernie Piles, will now read the names. World War I, Alonzo W. Bollinger. Emmett Boldman, John N. Catron, Edwin Folk, Dean F. Fry, Everett Gillespie, Albert Henry, Henry Hughes, Orville Johnson, Clarence E. Jones, Malcolm Klein, Benjamin C. Culper. World War II, Lewis Baker, Lyman Barkelo, James Buzzard, Lee Carroll, Woodrow Dillon, Vincent Demito. Richard Dixon, Kenneth Donahue, Cyril F. Eister, Carl Gray, Ralph Harris, George Hartzell, Lawrence 
Height. William Horn. Keith Hudson. Charles Jacobs. Earl W. Johnson. Robert Long. Gerald Myers. Elmer Michael. Clarence Moyer. Charles Nyman. Roger Oler. Clarence Polly. Victor Pfeiffer. Nelson Pratt. Robert Presler. Ronald E. Riker. Roy E. Reed. Donald Robinette. Norbert Schmitz. Donald Shue. Richard H. Schomberger. Nelson T. Simpson. Walter F. Smith. Max Southard. Richard A. Stalder. Charles L. Taylor. Vernon Thomas. Douglas C. Weaver. Orville Widener. Charles Weller. James T. Wilson. Willard Wolf. Korea. James Barton. Billy DeBoard. Richard McGraw. Jesse Widener. Vietnam. Tom Austin. Tom Combs. Mark V. Dennis. William R. Ebright. Jack Fusen. Brett Gorilla III. Gary Lee McKitty. Zach Napier. William R. Truett. Reggie L. Vance. James E. Walsh. Jack E. Wilbur. The Global War on Terror. Paul W. Zanowick II. We will now ask our auxiliary chaplain to please place the wreath. The flowers may wither, but the spirit of which they are a symbol will endure until the end of time. We will now conduct the post everlasting ceremony, led by past commander Wayne Kern. We will conduct the post everlasting ceremony for all of our comrades who have left us since our last Memorial Day services. Everyone present here today, please remain silent while we do this ceremony. This moment is almost sacred with the almost visible presence of the ones who have gone before. We come to honor the memory of those who offered his or her, her life in service of our country and who are now enrolled in the Great Spirit Army, whose footfalls cause no sound, but in the memory of mankind, their souls go marching on, sustained by pride of service in time of war. Because of them, our lives are free. Because of them, the nation lives. Because of them, the world is blessed. May this service deepen our reverence for our departed comrades. Comrade adjutant, please place the American Legion cap on the stack rifles.
This cap is in remembrance of our departed comrades' service in our country in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, or Coast Guard of the United States. Comrade Chaplain, please, please offer us a prayer. Again, we ask that you uncover. God and Comforter, who hears us when we pray, be with us as we remember those members of the American Legion Post here in Mimesburg who passed from this life into death this past year. As the names of these veterans are read, there will be those here who are related. There will be those who call them friend. Be with each one of us and comfort us in our loss. May we never forget that we will be reunited with them again when Gabriel sounds the reveille at the appointed time and we all join hands together. This we do pray, again as we all say together, Amen. Comrade Adjutant, please read the names of those departed comrades. Willard Abney, Roy Boggs, Gardner Burns Jr., William Ellerman, Dean Goodwin, Charles Hans Jr., Zach Hollingsworth, James Johnson, George Jones, Joe Myers, Arthur Newton, Richard Pettit, Oval Rich, O.D. Robinson, Ray Snyder, Eugene South, Paul Stutz. Comrade Adjutant, hand me the letter containing the service and legion records of those which will be trans which we will transmit the post everlasting of the American Legion. Comrade Chaplain, transmit this letter containing the service and legion records of our comrades to the adjutant of the post everlasting. This concludes our post everlasting ceremony. The band will now 
play a song. Commander, salute the dead.
please remain standing for the closing benediction. Our God and Father, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for comforting us as we honored the fallen soldier. Father, we thank you for the freedoms that we have because of the soldier's great sacrifice of service to this country. Moreover, we thank you for renewing our appreciation of the loyalty and commitment to duty that each member of our armed forces, living and dead, has so nobly performed for our country. Continue to bring comfort to each one of us when we leave this place. We ask that you give Gabriel the order to sound the bugle call of Reveille so we can all be reunited again, joining hands and celebrating in the victory. Bless the food that has been prepared for us this day for the picnic to follow. We ask that everyone will receive nutrition and fellowship during that time. This again is our prayer as we all say together, amen. Once again, I would like to thank our bagpiper, Kevin Brown, for performing today. Also, for Alberta Dunn and playing a singing of the national anthem and playing of taps along with our honor guard. To all of you out here, this is a fantastic crowd that has now gathered after we have gone through so many years of this COVID disaster. And I pray that all will be safe and sound and that this disease is now under control. I hope you will all stay in the park and enjoy the music of the Mimesburg High School Band. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our service today. And I thank you very much. Have a great Memorial Day. <laughs>